Hey Pottery People! Welcome back to our channel called Pottery People. I'm Kara and I'm so excited to do this video with you guys today because it's um, we're gonna uh, do an easier form of making a handle than the traditional version. And I love this, this technique because for those of you who maybe are just doing pottery as a hobby or for fun, you can get to a point of being able to make a very nice handle a lot quicker than trying to master that traditional pulled handle technique. And I'll tell you why. So if you're totally new, you've never made handles before, or if it's something you're struggling with, um, the traditional technique is where you make a coil uh, or like with little kids, we call it a snake. Um, and you make it kind of tapered. So it's wider at the bottom, more narrow, at, sorry, wider at the top, more narrow at the bottom. And then you pinch your fingers in to that wide part. You leave yourself a little extra there at the top when you're doing this. And then you dip the whole thing in water, dip your hand in water, and you slide your fingers down to stretch and pull it into a handle shape. Fun, fun technique to teach to adult students. <laughs> um, so then from there though, like my problem with that, that pulled handle is from there, you have a completely saturated and thin piece of clay. And so if you know how clay works, it's kind of like just a mushy, slippery mess. You have to wait for it to dry before you can attach it. So it kind of adds a little extra time. And it's just, it's so hard to master. Daniela was just asking me, how many times did you do a pulled handle before you felt like you could do it well every time from there on? And I guessed about 200 times before I had a good, mastery and I've continued to get better at it since then but 200 was about the point I would say where I wasn't messing them up anymore and with the technique I'm going to show you today I guesstimated about 50 times so it's still a lot you guys 50 times to do a process is still a big commitment I totally get it um but at least it's a little less and you know it might be a way that we can reduce the hours to have to invest to be able to make a nice handle so I'm going to show you a couple of examples first. I want to show you a pulled handle and, and a handle that I did using the technique I'm going to show you today. Um, and they are a little different, but this is the one that I did the traditional pulled handle. Okay, it's a nice handle. I'm not mad about it. And then this one I did with the technique I'm going to show you today that did, doesn't require the pulling part. We're just going to roll it out with a little rolling pin. So they are different handles. This one's a little more round. Um, this one's a little thinner, but I would argue that they're equal in quality. I like this handle just as much as I like this one. And uh, I know there's my, my diehard <laughs> pulled handle people out there who are gonna say, no, people should learn the traditional technique. Um, and you know, more power to you. But again, if you're wanting to make something nice and you're starting off and you're feeling like this is gonna be far off in the future when you can do something like this, then this is for this technique I think is going to be for you. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with about, oh, you guys, I'm not good at knowing sports balls. I don't know, ping pong, <laughs> ping pong ball size, maybe, maybe golf ball, depending on the form that you're doing, though. I'm doing a handle for a mug, so you can size this up or down. Like if you're making a big pitcher, you might want to start with a little more clay. If you're making a little decorative handle for like, say, the, like two, two little handles for like the side of a vase, go smaller. It's all adjustable. So you do it however you feel like you need to, but this is what, what about what I use for a mug. So I'm going to wedge it first. And if you are starting out and you're having a hard time with wedging, we're going to do a more in-depth video on the topic pretty soon. Um, but I'm doing the, um, the spiral wing technique. So some of you might do where you push it straight forward and you get the ram's horn. But either way, what I'm doing is I'm just spiraling the clay in on itself and I'm mixing any kind of drier parts of the clay and with where it might be a little bit more wet. That's a ram's horn. Ram's horn? Yeah, look at that. So ram's horn is where you take the, here, I'll just show you with this little piece of clay real quick. So ram's horn, you push it, it's hard to do you guys with a tiny little piece of clay like this, but you wedge it this way and it's called ram's horn because that's the ram's horn. And on this one, you get spiral here and here. And this one is good if you're beginning because it's a little easier because both hands do the same thing. The, the, um, I keep forgetting the name of this one. What did I call this? The cone, it's a cone. This one, uh, which is called like a cone style of wedging 
if you're doing a lot of pottery, it's quite a bit easier on your wrists. It's just a little lower impact, but again, it is kind of challenging to learn. So my right hand is basically twisting it and my left is pushing what I'm twisting into towards myself, pushes it forward. And when you do this, you, you can tell if you're doing um, the technique right, if you see some layers here and you can kind of see a spiral here. But again, we'll get more into it later. And I wedge about 50 times, or if you like to time yourself, about a minute is good. You don't want to do it too much because if you're working on an absorbent surface, which is good if you're working with clay, um, it'll start to kind of dry out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to form it into a ball where I start my handle here. And I like to kind of get rid of any like, well, it's not exactly a crack, but just those little areas where the clay hasn't totally been pushed back together, I like to get rid of those completely. Okay, so that's pretty good. Doesn't have to be a perfect ball. Just needs to be nice and compressed, basically. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna do the first step to making that traditional pulled handle that we talked about at the beginning of the video, the first step is the same. Really the only part we're cutting out is the pulling. So I'm gonna turn this into a wedge, or sorry, not a wedge, a tapered coil. Tapered just meaning that it's wider at the top, more narrow at the bottom. You can kind of see it starting to get there. And the, this step is kind of Again, it does take some practice to master, but I can give you a couple tips here while I'm doing this part. So this is the part that is the most important for forming the clay into the shape that you're gonna want it to go to. So a lot of times I see people try to kind of rush through this part and they'll do this or start off by doing this when the clay is not formed into its coil all the way. And uh, it just kind of sometimes causes the clay to get thick and thin or not have the, not, <clears throat> you want to start off with a coil that's really very round and even, okay? So that's why it's important to do it this way. And what I'm doing is I'm turning with this hand and squeezing with this hand, making sure to keep my fingers together. If you squeeze apart, obviously you get some indentions and we want it to be nice and smooth and flat. So I spend quite a bit of time on this step, you know, not much, maybe two or three minutes, but I take a lot of care with this step because again, I'm getting the clay going in the direction that I want it to right from the jump. So I'm gonna have less work to do later. Okay, so I'm just kind of compressing, reinforcing my taper at the bottom. And that's, that's pretty good. That's ready to go to the next step. So now I am gonna roll it on my board. But guys, when you do this, think of the board as it's doing the work for you, okay? So I'm not gonna push down hard here. I'm just gonna use the flat surface of the board to smooth this out. And if I push down too hard, I'm gonna get my coil warped and I've gotten it started off all really nice and round. So I wanna make sure and keep that in place, okay? And the, the um, because it's tapered, it's gonna naturally kind of roll in almost like a half circle. So let it do that. Don't try to make it go straight because again, you get warping. So I'm just being real nice and easy about it. There's no need to have a lot of push or grip on this step. Okay, so that's pretty good. I've got a few little areas that just need to be smoothed out a bit. So I'm just gonna do that with my finger. Again, I'm gonna try to stay away from the water Things get tricky. <laughs> so now is the part that when I learned how to do this, I just felt like it was a revolution for me. I was able to make handles so much faster and easier. And it's, it's pretty simple. You probably already have an idea of what I'm gonna do here with my hands and my rolling pin. But I'm gonna start by just flattening it a bit on the surface. And I am gonna incorporate just a little bit of water 
And you guys, you may not be able to see my sponge, but I'm squeezing it like all the way out. So it's barely, barely wet. And I'm just gonna use it to do a little bit of refining before I bring out my rolling pin. Okay. And I'm just gonna tap that down on the board a couple more times to get that extra water off the surface. Okay, so here's the fun part, you guys. I'm gonna take my rolling pin. And if you don't have one of these, you can just use a regular rolling pin, wine bottle, piece of PVC pipe, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be fancy clay tools. And I'm gonna roll this and push down a little harder at the bottom to get that taper. And you can see it here. Do this a few more times. I'm gonna stretch this guy out a little bit more. And I'm just gonna keep going until I like what I have and it looks like a handle. And I've got quite a bit of material up here at the base, so I'm just gonna roll it this direction now to maybe kind of spread that out a bit more. And you guys, I always look at it from the side to see my taper, check it, see if I like it. Give it a little bit more. Maybe smooth out the edges a bit. Because remember, any part of a um, piece that you're making that someone's gonna touch, like a handle or, or a lip, you wanna make sure it's nice and soft and round. And you guys, that's basically it. Okay, so no pulling, it's not soaking wet, it's easy to handle. From here, all I need to do is just pull it around, get the curve into it that I like. And that's my handle. Can do a little bit more refining on it if needed, but I mean, it's pretty, pretty easy and straightforward. So what I do with it from here is I put a little water on my board, I stick it down, and I leave it to rest for maybe, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and then it's ready to um, attach. So pretty easy, y'all. Pretty low maintenance. Looks, looks just fine, I think. So that's it. I hope you try it and love it. All right, so that's our rolled handle. I hope that you guys um, get some benefit out of learning to do this kind of handle because it, really, uh, it really, even being a potter for, gosh, I think I started doing this when I had been doing pottery for maybe 12 years or so, it still was like wonderful even for me to learn just because again, avoiding those slippery, delicate pulled handles, um, it actually just made my process quite a bit quicker, which I appreciate because when you want to produce a lot, that's helpful. So thank you so much for joining us uh, on Pottery People and we will be back with more. See you next time.